You may have wondered at some point, why do microwaves have those glass turntables that rotate your food? Well, today we're going to find out. When microwaving food, you've probably noticed there are hot and cold spots on the food. In other words, the microwave doesn't always heat up your food evenly. These hot and cold spots occur because of the ways the rising and falling microwaves interact with each other. Microwaves are reflected by the oven walls, forming standing waves in the cooking chamber. Standing waves are two waves of equal frequency moving in opposite directions. With standing waves, the peaks move up and down instead of left to right or side to side. Standing waves produce two different points on the wave. The peak points are called antinodes, and they have high energy. Nodes are when the peaks of a wave coincide with the trough of another wave and they cancel each other out. In other words, when a positive side of a wave and a negative side of a wave hit each other, they cancel each other out, and no heating occurs. If no heating occurs, this explains cold spots in food. The cold and hot spots in food can be explained in part by the nodes and antinodes. Due to the nature of waves, the microwave turntable is necessary to move the food to ensure more even cooking. If there weren't a turntable, hot and cold spots would be more dramatic. This demo shows why microwave ovens have the turntables in them. When I turn on the microwave, watch as the neon bulbs change in brightness. That is because the microwaves are unevenly distributed inside the microwave oven. They are more powerful in some places and less powerful in others, and that is the reason for the turntable, to ensure even cooking. You can visualize standing waves in a microwave by conducting an experiment. Here we have some thermal paper, or receipt paper, like the kind you would get from your local grocery store. Thermal paper uses heat to turn the paper dark. We are going to take three strips of the paper and wrap it around a piece of cardboard. Next, I used a spray bottle to spritz the thermal paper with water. The microwaves will heat up the water, which will heat up the paper and turn it dark. This allows us to see the nodes and antinodes where the sanding waves are in the microwave. So I spritz the paper and I try to make it as even as possible. I kind of smoothed it out. Next, I'm actually going to take out the turntable to see if that makes a difference. And we're gonna heat up the thermal paper. Let's do a minute and 30 seconds without the turntable. And we're gonna see what the result is. You can see the large hot spot and a number of cold spots where the paper hasn't even dried. They're almost like they're, the water droplets are still present. So this really tells us that without the turntable, there are very evident cold and hot spots or nodes and antinodes. Now we're going to repeat the same process in terms of the paper, spraying it down with water, except now we're going to put the turntable back in the microwave. And the idea here is to see if having a turntable in the microwave makes a difference with the thermal paper to see if we can spot any differences in terms of even heating, etc. So we're going to do the same exact thing. So things to note from this, uh, ex this experiment, there are no none of those large dark spots um, or antinodes, and that's because of the turntable. There are also less water droplets it's more of a it's more even you know it's a, it's a lot of gray darkish area and that's because of the turntable it really did allow for more even heating of the paper so this experiment goes to show you that the turntable in the microwave really does make a difference in terms of even cooking and even heating of your food thanks for watching